Hello! Today I want to talk a little bit about recursive descent parsing because I spent a little bit of time the other day uh, writing a quick tool for truth table generation. And in case you don't know what truth table generation is, it's basically a a table which shows each of the possible outcomes of every given input for a logic game. And so I wrote this tool called Truth, and Truth is simply a, a very simple C program, and you run it, and you write in a truth table expression, and it will give you the truth table as output. And you can make it more complicated, you can go A and B or C, and it will calculate the minimum possible permutations and it will calculate the final solution or p sometimes called q of the uh, output from the logic and so this entire program uh, has split into two sections if, if you think about it we have two main problems that we have to solve uh, the first problem we have to solve if i make this text a bit larger the first problem we have to solve is passing a truth lang registered trademark. And the second problem is the generation and devaluation of, what could we call it, logic expressions. So, I want to tackle the first section today, because if we actually have a look into run.c, um, it's actually pretty simple. All it does is calculates all possible permutations by doing some simple binary counting algorithms, and then it simply loops through them and recursively solves them. But I want to talk about that later because it's a good example of a recursive algorithm. What I want to talk about more though is the recursive algorithm in this file, parse. Now, if we don't know what parsing is, I can recommend watching what I was talking about how C parses uh, source files, because I think it's a very interesting part of computer science. But another very interesting part of computer science is also recursion, the properties of it that go towards it. And it, when you put these two together, you get recursive descent parsing. And I've got the Wikipedia article open for it here. And basically what you do is you recurse through, and every time you come across a symbol, that's a non-terminal symbol, if we're being formal, uh, that needs to be expanded and further uh, passed and have the result returned, then we simply recurse downwards. And so we should never forget either that every single, what could we call it, statement, I suppose, uh, can in of itself contain other statements, and so we have to recurse and pass downwards. And so the way that this works is, effectively, if I was to write up a a uh, definition of what truth lang works for. It's always built up of expression or it's built up of upper zero operation upper one. And operation can either be and or not uh, XOR and I think that's it for now. Um oh, in fact if we have a look at the ones that it's looking for we can actually have a look. XOR or not and yep and that's all of the defined operations an operand on the other hand an operand can be either a uh, named decl which is a named declaration or it can be a another statement uh, so it can contain a named declaration or a statement so what's a statement and so you can start to see now the process of us trying to tie up our references. An operation is a terminal. It's very simple. It is something that can be detected directly. And in fact, I'm going to say how that's done in a minute. But an operand can either be a named declaration, which is actually a terminal. It is simply an A or a B or whatever. Or it can be a statement. But a statement is non-terminal. So we have to recurse and we have to call another function which is going to pass our statement. And Further that, to make it more complicated, a statement can then contain more statements. It can contain a statement of in itself. But a statement, we can actually define this as a statement up here. Because this is the basic structure of a statement. And so we can define a basic program as simply a single statement, if I can spell. And so that is the entire structure of truth lang. A statement must contain uh, an upper, operand zero, an operation, and upper one. And I'm putting these in brackets mainly because uh, this can actually this structure can be different. For instance, if the statement we're writing is not a, and if we actually try that in uh, 
this is in the wrong folder. If we if we run truth and we run not a, it can accept that as a thing. And in the same way, if we run a uh, a a and not b, it can accept this in these brackets as a statement here. So uh, this is this is this is a loose definition of uh, the truth lang parser. So what do we do in order to pass? So first of all, you can notice that we get in a char pointer pointer with the program. The reason it's a double pointer is, in fact, if we look in uh, truth.c, the main source file, we actually pass a pointer to the char pointer, which is the text of the program. And this is extracted I either from one of the argvs, or it's extracted from the standard in. And only one standard in input is accepted. We don't do multiple program passes. but so we get a double pointer, and the reason we do this is so that we can actually increment the pointer, and we're returning a pointer to a statement object. So we start out by allocating the statement, pretty simple, and then we go into a loop, and we're looping until we get a null byte, until we get to the end of the program. So I think we can canonically say as well that a truth lang program is uh, terminated by either a closing bracket or by a null byte. So basically we're not going to segfault and we're not going to read past the termination of a statement. And this is actually really important as well. Why is this here given that we don't actually have, if we have a look, if we run truth again, uh, not a, we don't have to put a bracket at the end. We actually am al are allowed to though. We're not allowed to put one at the beginning though because it'll say that this will get passed as an operand and it will be expect an operation, which it says here. Um, but uh, the reason we have this here is because this function will be called recursively on any statement arguments that it finds. And we can see that down here in a minute. So the first thing that we do is we first copy the maximum size of an operand and then we compare. So this is a sliding window algorithm. What it's going to do is it's going to obtain a window, a view into the string uh, which is either up to the end of the string or to the size of the maximum size of an uh, operation and then it's going to do these comparisons on them and uh, it's going to do these comparisons uh, making sure that we clamp it to the size of the operand and this will check for whether the next thing in our string is an operation. And you can see as well that once we've detected an operation, we shift into a new state where we're checking the number of params that we've got. So for instance, if when we get an AND, we haven't already received at least one parameter, or exactly one parameter, uh, we say expected one operand. Uh, or if there is an operation already found, it's going to tell us that. So you can't write an, uh, AND or a. It'll say uh, expended one operand because it's going to pass the and as an operand. But that's some basic error detection. Uh, we go down, you can see the parser then skips any white space and next if it detects a start of, and this is the crucial part for recursive descent parsing, if it detects the beginning of another statement in brackets it will recurse and call pass recursively on this and this is where the double pointer comes in as well because it's going to need to mutate the state of our current pointer uh, and it's going to pass this into another part of the uh, abstract syntax tree which is really really basic it's not really a tree if in all honesty um, if it isn't then we just pass the parameter which is pretty simple we just go through until we get uh, something that's either an alphanumeric or a number which means that it's perfectly valid to do can't type today one or two and it will pass them as parameters as well um, but it's going to do that and then it's going to store the parameter as a numeric operand or an operand literal as I call it um, and then finally we do some simple sanity checks uh, we check whether we've got the correct number of operands so this makes it so that you can't run not a b because it'll say the wrong number of operands you just have to put not a similarly you can't put a not b because uh, it will give you the error about not expecting a single operand to follow. This also is like a catch-all case for people who think that you have to write that. Um, and if no operand was found, obviously the statement makes no sense. But this is the crucial thing to understand. This error detection extends to each of the operands. So if one of the operands is a statement, and statements in truth lang, as we can see up here by checking the value of C, 
uh, is denoted by an open bracket. And this this is because I couldn't be bothered to program in operator precedence effectively, so you have to denote the beginning of a statement using a literal character. But if we write not a or or b and c, then we get a valid truth table generated. However, if we write not uh, not a b and c or d then it will give you an error about the wrong number of operands provided. I could improve this error message to print the location in the string but I think that it's alright for now because this is correct error detection. We're not attempting to run with this and use some invalid source tree. Um, and then we give a log of the end of a statement. So in the most simple program, if we run truth with the verbose flag, in the most simple statement, not a, then we get some logs saying that we get the pass trace begins and we get a single statement which passes out as a not pr a not operand and a named parameter, which is perfectly valid. And then we just calculate Q recursively. Not, not very hard. Um, however, once we start to recurse, if we do not a and b or c, Oh, let's just make it simple, not A and B. Then, if we have a look back at the verbose output, we can say start statement, and then it passes this as a statement parameter, which you can see down here, and it's detected this via the literal statement begin. And then, uh, it detects that this start statement as it's recursed. So, we've started the main statement, which is the uh, actual truth lang program, and that's the entire thing. Then it's detected this, it's recursed by calling pass recursively, and now it's going to pass just inside the brackets as another statement. Then it's going to return this result and store it in the overall program, and then it's going to pass the rest of the statement for and and named parameter, and then we can see finally we get an end statement log for the whole program, and then the pass trace ends. So that demonstrates a little bit of how recursive descent parsing can be used to reuse error checking and to make logic nice and concise when uh, working with parsing text. Uh, this is a really kind of cheap mock-up of a parser of that kind. If we look at the Wikipedia example and we see its C implementation, we can see that it has a much cleaner and kind of Rob Pike styled, uh, Rob Pike in styled, Rob Pike styled. Um, token tokenizer because um, this in Go there's a very clean implementation you can get in Go and he's done a talk on this about how you can use channels to have a concurrent uh, parser and a concurrent lexer like the thing that extracts tokens and the thing that uh, interprets the token tree or the syntax tree and so obviously we can see that this is much more formal than my simple implementation rather than having an accept I simply check the value of C and then increment you know it's a lot more simple but it's also a lot less scalable and it starts to get unreadable after a while um, this is all open source on github it is located at uh, utils um, under the directory truth, I'll just put this big again, uh, under the directory truth this is all of the sources so you can see all of the um, source code for this exactly the same as it is here um, and so as an exercise to the listener I suppose try adding support for shorthand operations or even try adding support for operands with operator precedence I could add it but the reason I've not done it so far is because I want to be explicitly clear because I don't want to have to learn operator precedence for my own language like this to me n n uh, not a or b is so much clearer than not a or b because this could be interpreted by some arbitrary parser it could be interpreted as I don't know why it's doing that but it could be interpreted as not a and b or it could be interpreted as not a and b or it could even be interpreted as n not not a not a and b or something like that and all of those are implicit behavior. It's very difficult to tell what's actually going to happen. The parser becomes some kind of higher power that you have to guess what it's going to do. With this here, it's extremely explicit. You have to have two operands, A, uh, you have to have A and B, and if you want them to be a statement, you have to enclose it in brackets. And what's inside the brackets is parsed uh, individually. Very, very simple. So this is how 
uh, I programmed a simple recursive descent parser, mainly so that I don't have to write out truth tables for GCSE computing, but also because it's quite an interesting little exercise to have an attempt at doing, uh, because this internally will be how every compiler actually goes through your code. Of course, like I said, it will be a bit more clean and probably a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more formal than mine. They'll probably have it written out in like Bacchus Nauer or whatever it's called. The definition language for parsers, and they probably have loads of yak scripts and uh, lex scripts or whatever they're called, the thingy, and like GNU Bison. But mine is just a very simple C program, it compiles quick, and practically guaranteed to do correct uh, parsing. Uh, so this is a custom built program just to parse truth table expressions. All open source on GitHub and a, a, in my opinion a fantastic demonstration of recursive descent parsing. 